What's up everyone, it's your boy Jack here. Welcome to another video here on the China Crew channel. On this channel, we walk, talk, and explore China. Now, over the last few months, I have noticed a significant change in China and its laws concerning animals. A lot of people and friends back home would tell me, how can you live in China? How can you support Chinese people when they deal with animals so unjustly? Animals have no rights. Animals are being mistreated in China. Now tonight I'm going to be sharing five articles with you that I have found very recently showing that is a drastic change happening in China when it's concerning animals and animal rights. Moving to a new country can be intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. In this series, we'll take you by the hand and show you exactly how to survive. A senior Chinese legislator from Beijing has stressed fully implementing the wildlife protection law and a decision adopted in February to completely ban the eating of wild animals. Wang Chen, a member of the Political Bureau of Communist Party of China Central Committee and vice chairman of the National People's Congress NPC Standing Committee, made the remarks on Tuesday at a meeting of law enforcement inspection team of the NPC Standing Committee. Authorities across China have investigated and dealt with a batch of cases involving wild animals in recent months, stepping up the protection of wild animals, Wang noted. Illegal acts related to wild animals should be strictly handled, and capabilities of law enforcement supervision and quarantine inspections must be strengthened, he said. Efforts should also be made to help breeders shift to producing or selling other products and ensure compensations are paid, Wang said stressing needs to step up the protection and construction of wild animal habitats and advance legislation and law revisions. Now this can have significant consequences. If this ban goes through and you are no longer allowed to eat wild animals, that means that the wild animal trade from many many countries will come to a grinding halt because China is a large consumer of these wild animals. The world's hardware haven is taking a digital leap for pets. In May, China's southern city Shenzhen announced that all dogs must be implanted with a chip, joining the rank of UK, Japan, Australia and other growing number of countries to make microchips mandatory for dogs. This week, China regulators began to set up injection stations across the partnering pet clinics according to social media posts from Shenzhen Urban Management Bureau. The chip, which is set to last for at least 15 years and comes in the size of a grain of rice, is implanted under the skin of a dog's neck. Each chip, when scanned by authorized personnel, reveals a unique 15-digit number matching the dog's name and breed, as well as its owner's identity and contact information, which will help reduce strays. The microchip, a radio frequency identification RFID chip, doesn't track the dog's location, nor do the authorities store its owner's personal information, according to a local media report. What I like most about this is this will keep people accountable for not taking care of their dogs. If you abandon your dog, they can find you. Great job, China. China introduced the 10-year fishing ban on the Yangtze at the start of this year to protect its aquatic life in the face of dwindling fish stocks and declining biodiversity. However, illegal fishing has persisted in areas where local authorities failed to faithfully carry out measures to identify fishermen, offer them aid, and enforce fishing bans. The Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs said in another notice released on Wednesday. Xia Jijun, a fishery administration officer in Manshan, Anhui province, told People's Daily that a lot of illegal fishing took place late at night, which made law enforcement difficult and officers were also challenged by lack of staff and equipment. Xu Pao, head of the Chinese Academy of Fishery Sciences Freshwater Fisheries Research Center, said the fishing ban is a key measure to curb the decline of the river's ecosystem and avert biological diversity crisis. A study by the center suggests the population of four main fish species in the river have fallen by more than 90% since the 1980s. In recent years, less than 100,000 metric tons of fish have been caught in the river each year, down from the more 400,000 tons in 1954. Even worse, in the face of declining fishing resources, some fishermen have resorted to illegal fishing tools and methods, similar to ways like draining ponds to get all the fish, Shu said. As a result, the fishermen were getting even poorer and fish stocks were in an increasingly dire situation. It was a vicious circle. He said a lack of official statistics on fishermen and boats along the river posed a major hurdle for enforcement of the ban. Now I can see where this one comes from. 
the problem originated because China has such a large population and the growing, growing population demands more food. And one of the easiest sources of food is fish. But without strict regulations, overfishing can happen anywhere in the world. And with overfishing like that, a lot of fish species could die out. I was surprised, however, though, that a 10-year ban was implemented. That is very serious. That is a serious, serious step in the right direction. China vowed to gradually phase out the slaughter and sale of live poultry at food markets in a move welcomed by animal rights activists amid the coronavirus pandemic. The announcement came as China stepped up inspections of wholesale food markets and outlawed the sale and consumption of wildlife. After the COVID-19 resurgence in Beijing was traced to a major agricultural wholesale market, China will restrict the training and slaughter of live poultry, encourage the mass slaughter of live poultry in places with certain conditions, and gradually close live poultry markets, said Shen Shu, an official at the State Administration of Market Regulation at a press briefing. Shen urged local governments across China to strengthen supervision of food safety at agricultural wholesale markets and investigate hidden safety risks, taking the Beijing Xinfadi market virus hotspot as an example. The announcement was welcomed by animal rights groups. We are happy to see that live poultry markets are on their way out in China, said Jason Baker, senior vice president of PETA Asia. Now, though I maintain my stance that wet markets are an essential part of a lot of people's lives and the local economy, I do understand that the conditions on which some of these animals were kept in were horrendous. Ten chickens stuffed into a cage designed for four, sitting there sometimes under the sun for hours at a time, absolutely unacceptable conditions. The banning of live animal slaughter at these markets is definitely a step in the right direction. Good job, China. China's Ministry of Agriculture issued a draft list of animals considered fit to be used as livestock on Wednesday night including dietary staples such as pigs, cows, chickens and sheep, as well as special livestock such as a number of species of deer, alpaca and ostriches. Dogs are also absent from the list of livestock, which if formally enforced would lead to China's first countrywide ban on their consumption in the victory of animal rights activists. With the progress of human civilization and the public's concern and preference for animal protection, dogs have evolved from traditional livestock to companion animals said an accompanying explanation of the draft. They are generally no longer regarded as livestock in the rest of the world. It is not advisable to list them under livestock or poultry in China. In a statement on Thursday, the Chinese Humane Society International said that the draft proposal could be a game changer for animal protection in China. We have to await the outcome of the consultation phase, but this draft could effectively pave the way for China to officially take dogs and cats off the menu. Spokeswoman Wendy Higgins said, The consumption of wild animals is not common in most of China, but there is a highly lucrative trade, especially in the country's south. Yes, yes, yes. If you did not read these articles yourself, you heard it here first, then. Cats and dogs are officially off the list. This means that China can enforce, restrict the sale and slaughter of dogs and cats as food. If this draft gets passed, it is a leap forward for China when it comes to animal rights. Absolutely fantastic. Believe me, you deserve an applause for that. And worldwide organizations are right behind supporting China. And so should you. It's because changes like this, because the Chinese government is open to change, open to changing themselves for the better, that I am proud to call China my home. Thanks for watching everyone. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Bring that bell to get notified of new content coming out. This is Jack signing off from Xi'an. I'll see you in the next one. Xie xie.